This is a surgical case that's going to show a significant complication, uh, posterior capsular rupture with some vitreous loss and even uh, small pieces of cataract that were lost to posterior segment. Uh, I hesitated for a while before deciding whether I would post this on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, we all hope that cases go perfectly smoothly and it's very frustrating when cases don't. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why the capsule rupture happened in this case. I think that the patient had a sort of an unusual cataract. She's 38 years old, no obvious cause. Didn't look like a traumatic cataract. Um, I think that probably had something to do with why there was a posterior capsule rupture. Uh, but again, I think there's teaching uh, points in all cases, and I think patients can do well despite uh, having issues at the time of surgery if those uh, complications are managed appropriately. This is an interesting case of a 38-year-old woman with mild keratoconus, uh, previously intolerant of contact lenses, who presented with a significant cataract. Uh, you can see a lot of anterior cortical changes here. I was a little bit worried that the patient might actually have fibrosis to the anterior lens capsule, which might make accessing the uh, cataract difficult. So normal wound creation, um, here's the part that I was concerned about preoperatively is making the anterior capsulotomy. So I'm going to take my time with the cystotome and, and watch the capsule carefully as I get to that area where there might be some fibrosis. Uh, what I find is that actually the capsule tears just fine and there's no issues there. As you can see, anterior capsulotomy is actually going uh, perfectly smooth. I will make one comment, which is that you do have to be a little bit careful of the rexus wanting to go out towards the zonules in younger patients. So a lot of times you're going to be tearing more towards the middle. One of the more interesting things about this case is look at how good the uh, red reflex is. I didn't have to use tripan blue. Uh, I can see great, but you'll see as I start nuclear disassembly, um, get into the cataract, the cataract will turn white. As I spun the lens, I could tell that it was dense enough that I would need fake emulsification. Occasionally in very young patients, you can actually do the entire cataract surgery without any FACO. So I make my normal groove. Here I'm using normal technique, spinning the lens, um, breaking it into uh, quadrants. You can see how white the cataract has become. Remember at the beginning of the case, I had a great red reflex. I could actually see this happening as I was doing the surgery. I'm not sure I've seen a cataract turn as white uh, after starting the surgery as, as this one did.
So I'm getting most of the cataract out, really not much difficulty. I really haven't done any maneuver that's different than what I usually do. Um, as I finally get this uh, piece out, I become a little bit concerned that I might have a posterior capsular tear. It's hard to see that behind such a white cataract. I feel at this point that I can probably get these pieces which are not that dense with the uh, INA. Sometimes you can mash them into the INA port with your second instrument. So now I've taken these pieces out and I can finally see that I have a very large posterior capsular tear as indicated by the arrows. So obviously the blood pressure is up a little bit, my heart rate's up a little bit. I'm concerned about this uh, tear. Um, every case is different. I really haven't felt that I've got into any vitreous with the INA port. Um, if I had, it's time to stop with INA and, and start vitrectomy. But I feel like the patient's anterior hyaloid face is probably still intact, maybe because she's so young. And I'm going to proceed very cautiously with removing some of the cortex just with the INA. If I get into vitreous, then we stop and, uh, and go to vitrectomy. It's a little hard to see depth in these uh, videos, but the arrows indicate pieces of cataract that have already fallen into the vitreous. So I'm really not going after those with my INA tip. I really want to stay out of the vitreous, stay up in the anterior chamber and in the, in the bag to remove as much of the cortex as possible. Obviously you can see some subincisional cortex. I'm trying to get what I think is easy to, to get. Um, I really don't want to extend the capsular tear around. You can see the bag kind of billowing there a little bit. Um, you could make an argument for you know, a more thorough uh, capsular cleanup here. Um, every case is different. It's just surgeon judgment when you're there. I really was trying to reduce her risk of retinal tear, retinal detachment, getting into to vitreous or having the bag tear a zip around. So once I'm finishing up with uh, what I feel comfortable doing with the INA, I'm going to put Helon uh, into the eye with the INA tip still in the eye. I'm trying to pressurize the eye to uh, keep the vitreous back in the posterior chamber. Here I'm checking wounds, uh, which I do several times throughout the case uh, for vitreous. I'm going to make my paracentesis port a little bit bigger so that I can do some anterior vitrectomy. So the irrigation port is at the top of the screen. The vitrector is to the left. Um, just seeing what I can get with the uh, vitrectomy. I've got a little piece of cataract there uh, that might be entangled in some vitreous. Um, you want to use IA cut whenever you're removing cortex or uh, cataract and you want to try to use cut IA when you're just going after vitreous and you can toggle that on the settings of the FACO machine. There that piece was I was able to burp it out of the wound. There you can see a, a float or a piece of cataract behind uh, where I'm working. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So here I'm going to put some triessence in to stain the vitreous. I like to dilute the triessence at least 50-50 or even two parts BSS and one part triessence. You really don't need uh, a real high concentration. You can get a steroid response if you don't dilute it. Um, then we're going to squirt some BSS in just to get it to swirl around so it'll stain any possible uh, vitreous.
I really didn't have much vitreous on this case. You can see one strand there at the paracetesis where my irrigation port is. I'm able to get that with the vitrector. The triacense is very helpful in visualizing that. Now I'm going to fill the eye again with Helon. Um, we're going to put a three-piece lens in the sulcus in this case. We're going to extend the wound up to at least 2.75 millimeters uh, so that we can put the larger uh, cartridge that the three-piece requires into the eye. Um, here you want to try to inject the lens as slowly and uh, carefully as possible. Uh, you're aiming the first haptic into the sulcus. Sometimes it's hard to get it directly into the sulcus. It depends on the patient's eye and the lens that you're using. Um, but you'd rather it, the, the haptic come out on top of the iris if you can't get it into the sulcus. The worst thing you can do is shoot a lens into the posterior segment, especially uh, a concern if the patient's been previously vitrectomized. So I know I've got the first haptic in the sulcus. Now I'm going to rotate the lens around to get the second haptic in the sulcus. We're going to place a 10 nylon suture. I do this in all cases where there's a posterior capsular rupture, uh, even though this wound seems fairly watertight. Here we'll check the wounds. Um, I feel like we're in good shape. There's no uh, vitreous. I'm watching the iris whenever I do this. Next we'll put in myocol to bring the pupil down. Again, you're looking to see if the pupil is peaked or if there's any vitreous that you might have missed. Usually pretty easy to see it with the uh, triessence that's been placed. And at this point, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's no vitreous. I always do uh, subconjunctival antibiotics. In this case, I'm using vancomycin and ceftazidime uh, just to reduce the risk of endophthalmitis since it is increased in patients with uh, posterior capsular rupture. I like to warn the patient before I do this um, because you, if you're under topical anesthetic, the patient's probably going to feel a pretty good burn when you inject the subconjunctival antibiotics. So this patient came in uh, the day after surgery for her one-day post-op with a clear cornea. Uh, the pupil was very small due to the myocol, but it was not peaked at all. There was no uh, vitreous in the anterior chamber. 
and the pressure was 14. She actually had uncorrected distance visual acuity of 20-25 the day after surgery. She will be watched closely for retinal tear, retinal detachment, and ophthalmitis, CME, all the possible complications that can happen. And she might have to have a second surgery uh, to remove those pieces that fell to the back or uh, the cortex that was left behind.